In today's video, I'm going to try and forge an axe. I've forged a few things in the past, but nothing as adventurous as this, so I think it should be a good challenge. The main body of the axe will be wrapped around to form the eye, and that will be forge welded together, and then some high carbon steel forge welded in for the edge. And I'm making the body from 12 millimeter thick mild steel. Because the axe will have a beard, I've left some extra material on the ends. I'm guessing how much I need, so we'll have to see how that goes. These grooves will be to easily locate them when I come to forge the shoulders and to make sure that they're in the right position. I haven't fired the forge up in a long time so let's get into it and this should be fun. I also get a chance to use this very cool hammer for the first time which a mate of mine made and sent to me. I'm locating the grooves that I cut into it and hitting half on and half off the anvil. This will form the pole on the back of the axe and the other shoulder towards the end will be for the inside of the eye. This will meet the shoulder that I'll forge on the other end when the axe is folded over. If it doesn't quite make sense then it will do as the project progresses. If you're ready to add new woodworking skills to your toolbox, then join me inside the Maker's Mob for my upcoming Kumiko challenge. Starting June the 18th, I'll show you everything you need to know so that you'll be able to incorporate Kumiko design techniques into your woodworking projects. To learn this unique woodworking skill alongside the entire Maker's Mob community, simply click the link in the description below to take advantage of the 75% off pre-launch special before the doors close on Sunday, June the 13th, and we'll all see you there on the inside. Next I'm drawing out the cheeks with a cross peen hammer. This is moving the metal to the top and the bottom of the axe to form the ears. And now I'll do exactly the same to the other side, trying to keep both sides symmetrical. That's not looking too bad at all, so next I'll fold it over. I'll let that cool down before cleaning up the inside faces, ready for forge welding them together. Mm -hmm. 
The first thing I'll do is close it up and add some borax. This is used as a flux to limit any buildup of scale in the joint. If the joint does oxidize and scale forms, then the joint will fail. I've got the forge cranking and I've given the axe a good soak, so now I'll set the weld with light blows. After adding more flux and another heat, I'll increase the blows and hopefully weld it together. I did this four or five times and then I started to pin the front of the axe and start to give it some shape. I didn't forge weld the front of the axe so I could open it up and put the high carbon steel in there. And because of the flux in there, the two sides were slipping around and not drawing out evenly. I'm going to call this one a practice piece and start again. The forge weld worked out fine, but I've made the cheeks far too thin. And I did that by holding it badly with the tongs and I kept collapsing the eye, straightening it back out and collapsing it again. I did that too many times and I weakened the transition of the eye to the cheeks. I've already cut out the next piece, which I changed slightly and I'll just get into it. And that one failed too, but this time it was because of the forge weld. The gas bottle I was using was very low and I couldn't get enough heat into the forge. It just wasn't running hot enough and stupidly I kept going thinking it will be all right and it wasn't. Anyway, I'm learning all the time, so I'll start the next one and fingers crossed, third time lucky. I've already formed the shoulders and folded it, so I'll take it from there. I got the forge running just right, it's extremely hot and I also reduced the air intake to reduce the chance of any oxidization. I've also moved my anvil right next to the forge to set the weld even faster as it comes out of the forge. This time I welded the whole thing together and I didn't worry about opening up the front for the high carbon steel, instead I'll do that with the angle grinder. That came out great and even though I'm far from experienced, I really feel like I've learned something and I've turned a corner. For the cutting edge, I'm using this piece of 1084 high carbon steel. Next, I'll grind a taper onto it and that will help fit it to the axe. I've decided to tap weld it either end to hold it in position while I forge weld it to the body. Again, I'm just closing it up here and applying flux before putting it back in the forge and getting it up to forge welding heat. I should have cut that off flush rather than leave a piece sticking out. I may end up with a cold shut, but I'll trim it back later so it should work out. Next, I'll start drawing it out and give me enough material to play with and then I'll grind it to shape. I decided to try using my fly press, which worked out great.
Next, I need to shape the eye, and to do that, I need a drift. I don't have one, but I visited my mate Luke to see if he had one. He didn't, but he decided to make one there and then, and this is quickly how he did it. Luke has an awesome setup, and he's extremely talented, and I encourage you to check out his Instagram to see more of his work. The drift worked out great and even though I didn't show it, I went in a few times from either side. I reckon that turned out great. Now I'll start shaping it with the grinder. I don't think I left as much high carbon steel on as I should have and I would make sure to do that better next time by using a slightly thicker piece of high carbon steel and set it in further. It still worked out though. I lightly cleaned up the scale, but now I'll put it back in the forge for heat treating and the whole thing, including the polished areas, will blacken again. Before I heat treat it, I'll add my maker's mark, which I forgot to do earlier. If you're interested, I'll put a link above on how I made the touch mark. I gave the axe a good soak at 815 degrees C and then I quenched the edge in vegetable oil using my wife's loaf tin. I'm only quenching the edge as I want to keep the heat at the other end and that's for drawing the temper. I quickly polished the bevels while it was still hot and then let the heat travel back through to the cutting edge. I watched the colours running into the polished bevels and then when it was a bronze colour I quenched it again. It took a good few minutes for that to happen. Next I'll grind the bevels going through the grits and finally finishing on 400 grit which I also used to sharpen the edge.
Now onto the handle, and for that I'm using spotted gum, which is an excellent wood for a handle. I'm using this hatchet for a guide, and I think it's a good size to use for my handle. I could do it that way, but I won't. And by the way, spotted gum is very dense wood and doesn't cut easily at all.
That's just about done, it just needs some finish and for that I'm using boiled linseed oil. I think that turned out fantastic. It's not quite the shape I was aiming at, but I still really like it. I learned heaps and uh, I can't wait to do some more forging again. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.